Good evening, everyone. So far, we have three guests. The purpose of uh, today's town hall it was to, one, to provide an overview of the two previous town halls and some of the big ideas that came out of those conversations, and then um, to solicit some final points of feedback from the public about any additional elements that might not be present in some of the uh, in some of the pieces that were brought to our attention or came to life in the conversations that we've had thus far. So that as we finalize the proposed budget in the next few basically days, um, and then get ready to present it to the board uh, in about three weeks, uh, that we have a good representation of what the the community wants us to elevate um, as part of the budget process. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Asmani who has a, kind of a, present, a presentation just to kind of wrap up some of these ideas and elevate what came out of the previous town hall. Mr. Asmani. Sure. Well, hello, Joe, Sue, and uh, Nick. Nick. Hello, <laughs> Joe, Sue, and Nick. Thanks for being here. <laughs> um, so just a quick overview, and some of this information is, is, uh, is repetitive. Um, you know, we have a cycle, a budget cycle is typical. We start in October. Um, right now, we're at step two. We've kind of received the requests from, from the departments. We're looking through those. We are sharing information, looking at adjustments can be made, and then the superintendent mentioned in the next couple of weeks, we'll be sitting down with the superintendent to put together the superintendent's uh, recommended budget. And then it will go over to the city and be part of the city budget process, and then we'll get it approved um, at some point. At some point in June. Um, just some facts. This slide, and then I'll go into uh, some of the work that we've done so far in the budget process. This is the funding history of our budget, going back to fiscal year 21. We were at five uh, percent. Uh, we've had conversations about what happened in 22 with some of the ESSER funds, and then FY 23 we were funded at four and a half percent. For the fiscal year 24, uh, we were originally funded at 4%, but the city provided us some additional funding through some of their federal dollars, which brought, up, brought our total funding to like a 5.1% level. And uh, last year, we were funded by the city at 3%, with some additional funding from the city after the budget was approved, it brought our total to like 3.8%. And so that's kind of our budget history. So this is the third town hall that we've done. Uh, the first one was in person at Nathan Hill, and then we did a virtual one. The one at Nathan Hill, we had about 15 or 15 or so participants. We also did a, a virtual, um, well, then we did an online survey uh, to gather input. From the survey, we had about almost 80 people respond to the survey and give us input. And then we had another virtual town hall on November 6th where we had maybe four or five people participate in that, and then this is our third and final town hall just on the Board of Ed budget. And then from this process, there'll be other opportunities to engage in the overall, in the overall city budget. So some of the things that we've heard, what we've done is, we've kind of gathered the information from all of those series of feedback. Uh, but initially, when we started to put this budget together, there were a couple of things that we were looking at um, and to see, can this budget address these things if the funding was available? We know that there was a lot of one-time funding for two years um, in a row. That one-time funding is going away. And so this budget now has to address the fact that the funding that we got to run of our program is going away, but we still have those programs in place. And how can we put a budget together that takes into account? We know that with our special education, uh, we are having challenges with funding. Uh, largely because our providers, they've increased their rates to provide services to us, uh, but at the same time, we're also identifying more students with special education needs. Um, last year, this is maybe less of an issue now, uh, the state did provide additional funding for Alliance District, of which we are a part of. We received an additional 1.2 million. It wasn't clear whether that will continue to come directly to districts, or if we will go to the towns or cities to redistribute with their districts. Uh, but I feel like fairly comfortable that this money will remain on the school district side. So that's no longer the issue that we thought it would be um, going into the budget discussion. 
we've had conversations about funding for pathways or other opportunities for students that don't necessarily want to go to college, um, but just giving them opportunities. So one of the things we have looked at uh, last year and this year is this pathway for the HVAC uh, certification. And so we're talking to some local providers and how they can help us uh, develop that. When we looked at this last year, it was about 350 to 400,000 uh, to provide that opportunity to about 30 or so students. And so that's one of the things that we wanted to have a conversation. I and mean, then we are working with the city on how we fund our insurance uh, policy. So it's funded through the city, but there's conversations about possibly having the Board of Ed take up that expense, uh, which would be a new expense for us. Uh, but I think the conversation we're having with the city so far um, are good, and then for this may not be an uh, operating budget uh, issue that we, we, that we may need to address. But the issue of staff retention and recruitment is something that we heard quite a bit. And one of the things that we're looking at, we're obviously losing, uh, not only in Norwalk, but many districts are challenged with staffing, uh, not only retention, but also recruitment. And so one of the things that we have been trying to explore is how can we get ahead of that? And some of the things that districts are doing are either doing signing bonuses or looking at stipends, how you attract uh, people to your district and get them to stay, because other districts are doing this. And specifically this school year, uh, towards, the end of the, towards the end of summer, we had individuals, teachers lined up to start. Um, and then just before school start, they got poached to other districts because other districts were open we're offering signing bonuses and stipends. So our school leaders, our principals, um, were challenged in you know, two weeks before school starts having to find people to, to go into those classrooms. So these were some of the things that we were initially looking at, um, at funding. So through the process of engaging the public, some of the themes that we heard uh, from them was that they did like the idea of having more community involvement and stakeholder engagement. So that was something that came up, and so this is something that we we'll perhaps continue, um, and just to look at different ways to kind of refine it. One of the things we also heard in that process is not everybody can come in person, and therefore we kind of made an adjustment, and that's when we did the online piece uh, survey where we got about 80 people that would have otherwise not been able to show up to a meeting. Teacher retention and recruitment was something that also kind of bubbled up in terms of priorities. Uh, the need to provide resources equitably across the district, addressing individual <coughs> student needs, meeting the students where they're at, was something that we also looked at. Uh, but then also looking at how do we look at our individual programs and budgets, and are they providing the outcomes that we want them to, prov to, to provide, and are we getting the results that we want to the results. Uh, and then tied to that equitable resource is just supporting the diverse needs of students. Um, our district is, is, is different than some other districts in that we do have a very diverse student body. We have multilingual learners, we have students with special needs, um, and, and we're an urban district, unlike other non-urban districts. So just the needs of our students are different, the supports that our student needs are different. Uh, we have a very robust future ready program that provides alternatives to students who can't necessarily complete school the traditional route. Right now we have about 100 students in that program. And so this is all towards trying to address some of those diverse needs um, of our students. So some of the things that in, in trying to kind of see what can we do to address some of these things. So for example, we know that with teacher retention, these are some of the challenges. We're losing high quality teachers for other districts. Uh, we also know that whereas in the past, our salaries were actually competitive relative, uh, relative to other districts around us. Uh, many districts have kind of caught up to our salaries, and even if we offer a little bit more, the incentive to commute to Norwalk and work with our diverse needs of students in our classroom, sometimes people would rather just stay in their own communities where the needs aren't as diverse and they don't have the long commute, and the pay may be less, but not by that much. And therefore, so that is something that we're also trying to figure out. And therefore, can we do things like bonuses and stipends? And obviously, a lot of this is determined by the teacher contract. But I think some of you heard um, at the meeting yesterday, we heard from the unions that this was something um, that they also wanted us to, to look at. But then we also know that once you have uh, quality uh, staff people in your buildings, um, 
and you have all of these things in place, the stability of the staff also ensures that continuity. When you have a classroom that's constantly changing substitute teachers, that's not the best uh, learning environment. Uh, but we also know that once you can retain teachers for a long time, that experience that teachers have does improve, to some extent, student outcomes. They serve as mentors to other teachers as well. So we know that this is really something worth, uh, worth doing. So some of the things that we could do in the context of this budget is develop uh, compensation packages that are um, c competitive. But we also know some of the challenges with Norwalk is Norwalk is not only is it not affordable for teachers, but even for executives. And there are many people that just can't afford to live in Norwalk even though they work in Norwalk. And therefore, how can we partner outside of our budget, but partner with other organizations to provide those options? And I know the superintendent is very passionate about this. Uh, we were in a Zoom a couple of back. There's some communities that are doing this very well in partnering with their cities, with their development agencies, uh, specifically with, with housing. Uh, but then also, how can we simplify the certification process and reciprocity? Uh, these are things we're working in progress. Like for a long time, we would have teachers that come to us with experience in private schools, and we could not count their private school experience uh, because the contract was written that way, but we worked with the union to change that. And so now as we bring in teachers, into the public sector, even if they have a relevant experience in the private schools, um, they can get compensated um, accordingly. So we used to have situations where somebody has taught six years in the private sector, but none of those, none of those years count in terms of where you place them, uh, where you place them to start. So that's something we're also looking at. Uh, we know um, again the diverse needs, shortages <laughs> in special ed, pathways, um, increased needs for bilingual support is something that also came up. Um, we know that providing adequate support, personalized support for these students does lead uh, to outcomes. Uh, we heard that we should offer alternatives to get students ready for their career post high school, if not everybody's going to go to college. And so some of the things that we're looking at is, again, how can we provide it? And these are really hard to fill areas, even in schools that offer great compensation. Um, so what can we do to offer incentives for SPED, multilingual and vocational teachers, and how can we partner with local organizations to provide some of these pathways? Uh, we had a meeting with the superintendent today and we were having a conversation with the folks from the city about, as far as addressing, for example, multilingual learners, even partnering with other uh, Spanish-speaking um, Spanish countries for their teachers to come to the U.S. and offer and, and give them incentives to come here um, and teach. And so these are things that other districts are also doing, developing partnerships with places like, you know, Puerto Rico and those types of things where they can come here without the immigration issues where you can come back and forth uh, relatively easily. Um, but we also want to make sure that resources are, are um, equitable. We know that uh, as part of the learning is not just the academics, but providing, uh, you know, band, uh, band opportunities, sports opportunities, and those types of things, and therefore to just resource our schools so that our students can really, can really achieve. So some of those things that we're trying to do, for example, in the past, uh, we would provide, we called it the Magnet Assistance Program, which is a $2 million line item, but essentially we would provide this funding to schools in addition to their base allocation to provide additional structures. For example, Wolfpit, uh, we pay, for example, they couldn't they could not, within their SPB, pay for a music teacher, or I don't know if it was a music teacher or an art teacher. Yes, yes. Dance teacher, thank you. They couldn't pay for a dance teacher, but with the supplemental funding, they were able to fund a dance teacher from this funding. Now, for two years now, we haven't been able to do that, uh, just because of the tightness of the budget. But one of the things that we wanted to, um, to do with this budget is to include that again um, as, part of the base, as part of the base funding. Um, also looking at co-teaching models, uh, because these have been proven uh, to work in our, in, in our schools, and therefore how can we resource our classrooms so that we are able to provide those opportunities um, to co-teach. Uh, but all of these things require, require funding um, that is difficult to do in the current environment. Um, <coughs> and so one of the things that we also did as part of this conversation was we engaged with the board and we asked the board what are some of the things that they were hearing as they're out uh, in the community. And so the board also gave us 
some really good feedback in terms of what the priorities are and, and what they're hearing um, out in the community. Uh, but obviously, some of the challenges that we know we're facing um, is ARPA dollars that are going away, as I mentioned before. Uh, facilities um, is going to be a challenge. Just making sure that our facilities and our programs are adequately funded to support the needs um, of our students. Uh, we know that having stability in the budget ensures uninterrupted learning. Um, we want to be able to have, kind of have, right now it feels like there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, you were able to find money for something this year, but you're not sure if you can do it next year or the year after. So I think that uncertainty also is not good for that continuous, uh, not just in education, but in any, in any aspect. And therefore, one of the things that uh, we have been talking about is, is there a way, and I think we, uh, maybe uh, Sherry did mention this uh, in an earlier conversation, is there a way that we can kind of sit with the city and say, here, can you, and some, some places have done this, you know, for the next three years, we can do X, Y, X percent, X percent, and X percent. And that way we all know going in what that increase is going to be for the next two to three years. And you can more appropriately budget for that, you can stagger things, you can plan. And so those are some of the things that um, uh, we, are, we are looking at doing. Uh, and so what we would like to do at this point with the three of you <laughs> is um, just to take some, and this is actually the last slide in this presentation, is just kind of based on what, do you want to say something? Just based on what you heard, um, how if you were to rank some of these things that you just heard, are there things that kind of stand out that if we couldn't do five things, um, if there maybe two things or three things that we should really focus on this year, uh, what would those top three things um, and we can kind of have that conversations amongst the trio, trio um, and then we'll just do a quick recap and then we'll just kind of get from there. But thank you for listening.
for the, uh, yeah. yeah, that was interesting because it seemed like crazy uh, that that's the case, that the state's giving more money to employment banks than our country schools. Because I know like, like all of the teachers contribute with the same percentage. Mm -hmm. It might be because they might be getting paid more, so the contribution might be larger. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't, and that, I'm not sure, it, it might be city pensions, because our pension, our pension is funded by the state. Uh, so I don't know, yeah, the TRB handles ours, so it's just, ours is the pass-through, so I don't know, you know, I'm actually on the hour just looking for the article, I can't see it. Um, I, I, read that. I missed it. I had a sister-in-law who has worked for years in uh, the Torrington area. And it had, working there for 35 years and working here for 35 years or so, as I have, uh, uh, my pay was higher. And so the percentage of my pay, uh, so what I'm trying to say that is they get less yeah. money for retirement than, than I get. Uh, this is <coughs> down getting the back straight. I uh, worked for 20 years in Florida, so that doesn't count here, I worked for 22 years, and 23 years in Connecticut, and 23 years in Connecticut it was about the same amount that she got in retirement at 35 years in Torrington. So, so the amount you, you, your, uh, Return our pension is based, based on the final three years, um, or your best three, three years. Your final three years yeah. and a percentage of that. of that. So it's not really, that's a, that's more of a state problem than a So that's a, a, yeah, that is that's a state thing. So this, but they're saying like it's not, not equal because if you're um, working in more rural areas, generally, so you will get paid lower and uh, then you'll have a lower pension. So fix that, but it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's got a few layers <coughs> to the answer. Yeah. And for us in that motion, it's uh, increasing teacher pay, and mm -hmm. never really increased the, um, teacher right. uh, pension. Yes, because yeah. the contribution goes up. Goes up. The contribution goes up, but then also at the end of the retirement. Payment. Supporting the first students. We need to make sure that the schools that have more, um, we all have a lot of moments, but we need to make sure that students get what they require in order to be um, successful. So differentiating the need based on right. student body. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something like we've been trying to do. It's just been hard for you. Yes, um, doing some of the waiting. Particularly for schools that have high numbers of <coughs> students that are learning a different language, and then the special education to do that as well. Most of them say, "Can you do So, knowing that both kids got something because they're small school doesn't mean that we don't need it in a larger school. So I think with regard to equity, one of the things that, uh, you know, equity is not equal, but right. still, mm -hmm. but still, do we still have the same sort of needs? Mm -hmm. We had a, a state visit this, this week, I think it was you know, Monday, um, and they were looking at our funding information and funding data, and one of the things that they did credit us for was that relative to other districts in looking at the needs, and it looked at high need students and all of those things. We were actually doing really well compared to other district in terms of how we allocate the resources. But there is still a lot lots of need to do. And so that's one of the things that That's a really good point. One thing you can probably get a lot of uh, mileage out of, but use it like uh, for, for not that much uh, money to do, like, you know, with uh, or, or sports, like it's, it's, because I know that, but also, like, you know, to do like plays and stuff, but like, with the coaches, I don't know whatever their allotment is. I know my little brother these coaches out of California, so he tells me what he makes. And, you know, it's not a huge amount, but you know, if you're making five thousand dollars, you know, 
as I don't know what you call it, spiking or whatever, we're doing that. You know, if you increase that dollar amount a little bit, you're going to get people that do it more continuously, and and, uh, and it, for a small amount, you get big return because you know, the community is pretty invested in this stuff. And you know, you see like towns like Japan, and I have a friend that lives over there. And, you know, it's not like they're spending a huge amount of money on that, but you know, it. You know, I, I know that some of the coaches, the more continuity, you get teachers that do that as well, and you get a lot. You know, you get a lot of traction for a low amount, and it's good. the kids buy in, the community buy in, and stuff like that. But I say the same thing for like, I don't know. However, the after school stuff with like the, you know, my daughter's in the plays and Fox Farm, yeah, Mr. Greenberg is fantastic, but she puts a lot of time in there. So if she can be compensated financially for that time, and that kind of stuff, you know, goes a long way. The students benefit, the town, the parents, I mean. Well, we do have stipends, like athletic <coughs> coaches, and they so yeah. have a whole scale, depending so on. So I don't know if it's in line with other town mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sports review? I don't know that. We can look at that. Yep. I tried to capture it, but stipend doesn't mean so it's Because, like, when I, when I hear about it for like the youth sports, I mean, and I, even on high school level, like uh, my friend says it's just a coach who's making more as like the fifth varsity coach as probably the head varsity coach he's getting. Mm -hmm. And he's not even a teacher at the school. So, you know, you're not talking about a big dollar amount, but, you know, if you, I've uh, heard, you know, as big as the budget is, but if you throw a couple of dollars here and there, you know, like I, I know uh, Coach Mitchell and all the guys, like all the guys, and Coach Mitchell, and all the guys, and Coach Mitchell, he probably spend his career there. So, you know, if you invest in someone like that, or grow the program, you know, I think it goes a long way. Um, so, um, Sue said some of it, but, um, I mean, I'll be very honest, I would not be a fan, and you know where my position is, but not a fan of um, assigning bonus. To me, that is, you know, a non-starter. That that recruits people at the beginning, but the people who have built this district are ignored. So if we were looking at it that way, I don't know how we create, you know, longevity steps going backwards to that, um, things like that. But um, obviously, my first concern would be for our MLL and special ed students. Obviously, facilities and space would be my second priority and then teachers and staff. And not just teachers, but our paraprofessionals that we need support as well. And increasing the number of, of um, especially like MLL pairs and getting some of the technology that um, we've been able to see at conferences and stuff and getting them quicker to our schools. So like technology it, can you do more specific? So there's, um, we found, um, a device that we can leave on the desk and it translates back and forth. So if you I speak, right, now. right, but it's so much easier. Like I, I, earlier or last year we had the MSAT people come and I was translating through my phone and I don't like that. Like for me, I don't want the kids to see me with my phone as I'm telling them to put their phones away. Mm -hmm. So this is a device that looks very similar to a phone, but if I leave it on the desk and I have the other like receiving end, I can speak, it translates, they can read it, they're able to do the work, and I don't have to like hover over them and be like, okay, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, we identified this, we have a grant to pay for it, like bonuses in a different, unique situation, and we're still waiting. And I don't know if it's like the feds, I don't know where the money is, but it's like that kind of stuff. It's like, we can identify sometimes solutions that would make everything easier, but it's just this dragged out process to get those. So just if we can streamline some of that stuff. Um, like that would help no matter Everywhere, that yeah. It, and it doesn't matter what school, and, and they're inexpensive. I think they're like 130 or $140 on like Amazon. So it's not like, you know, a $10,000 piece of equipment. Because in the honor people, some of the teachers use students to do the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We do that yes. in the middle school and it's... And it's sometimes it becomes a, the child becomes a teacher. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Because there is not enough help in all that um, We actually just went through, uh, I think took the government through a training around all of the new AI devices. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to use a phone, you could right. even have a computer in the room. And the 
the capacity. Rob, you, you, you want to do a sample for, for them to see? <laughs> um, Rob and I were like testing it out. We were having a back and forth conversation. It's, it's just beyond kids re being able to read the text. It's actually having a, a, a a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just show people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we're hoping to do just wide is kind of do an AI dump mm -hmm. for people to see what's out there and, and get people to experiment before we can make investments. Right. Because we have to. Because and there's, and there's people's comfort level. Like I know, like one of the one of the issues that we face at home is is we're out of room. So we got this wonderful grant. We have all this money. We want to attract more kids. There's no room. I have two sections of 28 and two sections of 27. So there's two more kids that can come in the sixth grade, and after that we're closed. But I can't attract more kids. I, I would love to have more kids. I'd love to have more sections. I'd love to do more, but we don't have that. We, we don't have space. We're, we just were renovated and we're out of space. And unfortunately, you know, CMS needs space too to grow. And they're, we're like this the whole time. Like we're already out of space and we're yes. building the school in South Norwalk. Yes. Fingers crossed, Strings CMS can move back there. The Maybe <laughs> somebody changes their mind. <laughs> okay, just throw it out there. I mean, it's, not it, and, that, and that's not writing that down. Well, no, I, 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 I understand it, but I mean, that, that, that's the priority. We, we don't have, even in the buildings now, we don't have space that we need to be able to do things. Like, you know, in my MLL class, having 28 kids, and we're trying to do hands on science, and I have one electrical outlet because the building is old and doesn't have new outlets. I'm not in a science lab anymore. I'm in a regular classroom, so there's no room, even though the curriculum is requiring me to do things. So it's like some of those, you know, spatial issues where we're putting, we have the resources, we have things, but we're locked into models that don't necessarily, you know, fit the needs of the kids in front of us. It, it fits this school or it fits that school or as Sloan said, you know, there's something that works here and they got it. Why don't we have it here? Why do, why do we have to like wait and find out that this school has this or that school has that or when we go to PD? So that's a capital conversation right. that we can have with like capital budget facility, um, facility modification, space limitation. If we're going to talk about capital too, please check with the furniture. The furniture that Ponus has is garbage. Half of it's broken already. It's a, well, no, we, we were able to get new furniture, but when it's picked from someone who's not in a classroom, it's very difficult. Like, I have kidney shaped desks and circle big tables like this. I can't do anything with that. Like, if the kids are either here, we have to do group work, they're in a circle. It's going to be, you know, if I need somebody to do something individual, I don't have a way to do that because I only have round tables. Um, the desks themselves. If you sit at the wrong end, it falls. They're falling apart. They're, you know, all of that kind of stuff, and they're new. So I can't imagine like what Marvin has. Oh, okay. You know, but it's, there's schools that I'm sure have older furniture, and I know that like you know, South Park's going to get older furniture. It's going to last longer. Yes, because it's made out of metal instead of plastic. Um, I just want to show just a quick demo. Conversation. Let's let's see what happens. Nice Hi, I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Estrella. I would like you to translate everything I say in English to Spanish and everything she says in Spanish to English. Got it. I'm ready when you are. Good evening, Dr. Estrella. How are you today? Just like baby. Buenas noches, Dr. Estrella. Estoy muy bien. Un pero muy interesada en la, en la conversación que tenemos hoy. Yes, it's a great conversation and it's going to help develop our budget priorities. Sí, y espero que la información que obtenemos hoy nos pueda ayudar a desarrollar un plan muy efectivo que la Junta Educativa pueda utilizar para tomar decisiones para el futuro. Yes, and I hope the information we obtain today can help us develop a very effective plan that the school board can use to make decisions for the future. Thank you so much for the conversation.
Huh. What about these? When another, when you have multiple students and they're all both of them or multiple are talking at the same time. Yeah. I didn't know which like, one to translate. I have to be in the classroom. With see, I was talking over you guys. Yeah. Well, I guess that this this technology is not there yet. Yeah. This, this technology is, is a one-to-one -one dialogue. That was chat GPT. So, like you yeah. That's chat GPT. Exactly. But there are others that are more sophisticated. There are others that yeah. act as tutors. Yeah. They yeah. they yeah. interface yeah. like humans. So we continually pick up the other other conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Also like it. But I'm pretty sure yeah. in a short yeah. amount of time, yeah. you're gonna, so it's gonna have multiple yeah, conversations. Sure. It could pick up multiple perspectives mm -hmm. in the room at once. So like but I, I just, I just thought that it was something for you, for you guys. That's just a sample of many yeah, of yeah, the tools that are available. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, Rob, you need to share that in the next. Cool. But we're gonna do a, we're gonna provide a, a training mm -hmm. for because something like that would be so helpful mm -hmm. when parents come into the building. The, the, the cabinet was mesmerized by all the stuff that's already out there. So we're gonna do it for the for the principals, and then hopefully. Our goal is to do it district wide, mm -hmm. um, just showing, uh, just doing a uh, kind of what I call a brain dump of, of technology. Um, There's so much out there. Translate one. Yeah. Um, so word for word. Translate. But now let's go back to the budget yeah. conversation. No. Um, yeah. Anything else that uh, should be top of mind for us as we start wrapping up and and finalizing the proposed budget for the. Mm -hmm. Like you were just talking yeah. about, like, 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 how to implement it, but just make sure that some of the schools that maybe aren't as up to par as the other ones can get a little IT tech, someone in there to sort of give them what they need. So it's a more and just so you know, this so the IT team has a cycle in which they upgrade. Um, I forget the name of the devices, the broadband. Um, so we can follow up with you to let you know when the class run is uh, on the list. Of state. I mean, I care about it. I care about it, but no, I'll, I'll but but that way you stuff. know, like yeah, the yeah. cycle at least. And where Fox Run is in the school book. Because every X number of years they're, they're upgraded. So I, we can check and see where, where they stand on the list. It'd be helpful to know when those things are happening because we've gone from, we're going, from what change to an icon based, whatever that means, mm -hmm. what you said. Mm -hmm. But that caused so many issues and continues to cause issues where the, the staff who was Trying, we're trying to fix them. Like I can't, I can't print from my computer because of the new, the new the new receivers. Right. So if we, you know, if we were to know ahead of time that this was happening, we could have maybe figured out some things. Oh, well, that's why that happened. You know, rather than mm -hmm. trying to go backwards, but just having information about those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts on anything else budget related? <coughs> Greenhouse. <laughs> That's his personal. Agenda. That's his personal agenda. What is this? No, it's a greenhouse. Uh, greenhouse. No, I, it's, 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 it's not just a school agenda. It could be a pathway. It could be a pathway. An ag pathway. I agree with you. I know. I already have a vision. That's a very good pathway. That's why I sent you the email. I show you the picture. I know. So I am met with me. Okay, so it's, that, that's just my personal challenge. Yeah. I was just going to say, I like that as a pathway. I did like, too. I, I worked, like, well, we, I, I we worked applied for a grant. I'm like, we applied for a grant. <laughs> ag, yes. Yeah. So I have a friend who went to an ag high school and then went to college for it. Went, it's, yeah. it she it's, all, it's a through. real thing. Like, yeah, we, that's a good pathway. I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the League of uh, and digital, with digital Promise, which is part of how we've gotten a lot of the, the funding for our new devices and devices with broadband connectivity. And one of the places we looked at was um, Lindsay, California, and they have an agricultural pathway, mm -hmm. and um, they're connected to a university. 
I showed you the facilities. Mm -hmm. So I already have a vision like of what that. we want to yeah. do. Yeah. We, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out where where can we design it. We have plenty of space. Not not those not those boxes. <coughs> well, I, have a, I have a different vision for it. But that's we're going to figure I, it out. So I like that. In all credit, I, yeah. um, I sent you the email for that because mm -hmm. there's grants that are available that I know that Lisa Langs Gold is working on. Yeah. So we're going to figure it that out. And that kind of stuff. So that's I just want to know <laughs> if you want to go if we want to go greenhouse. I'm happy to go greenhouse. I prefer freight farm because it's a little bit easier. But farm. you know. Greenhouse. <laughs> I'm gonna find. Exactly. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find some. I'm gonna talk to that guy from Minnesota, and he's gonna, gonna donate me okay. two hundred k, and I'm gonna have my tree <laughs> okay. up on the roof. <laughs> so thank you again. This is. I think you brought up a really good point. That really just went out there. But the signing bonuses are good, and you might be more on board. I think. Uh, like you don't want to leave the, the the teachers that have been there putting in the work yes. for so long, like long behind. Journey. So I think like you definitely wanna compensate them and uh, financially, but also just like their opinion. Because like when I talk sometimes, I hear like with the changes and stuff, like these guys have a wealth of experience and they've been doing it forever. And then it's not just pivot and switch and do this. Yeah. And they, you know, I know like you guys have your goal on getting scored like this and that. I mean, you guys have a big job to do and are very effective at it and do a great job. But some of these guys might feel like a lot getting, their opinions getting lost in the process right. and undervalued and stuff. So financially, but also just like listening and giving them, I don't know how you would give someone autonomy, but like, you know, if you've been teaching for 20 years and all of a sudden someone's telling you, you gotta change it, and they know what's worked for that many years. Um, no, and, that, and that's, a really, that's a lifelong challenge. That's a really good point. And something like that, obviously, because it's contractual, we wouldn't be able to actually do it anyway. So we would be sitting with the union and we would he I'm the VP. Yeah, we would. <laughs> you can't do anything without Joe. Yeah. So. No, no, no. no, 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 no. There's a two. There's a piece of retaining, and yeah. then there's a piece of attracting. Right. And right. I just think, I think that there's an attraction like, thing that we have to address. When, and to just talk about like the PR part. When this comes out and people see this part and it says signing bonuses, that's immediately the shutoff for the older staff. They're like, wait, I've been here. I've been in the trenches. It looks as if you're. As you said, not intentionally. I don't think it was intentionally, but it looks as if you, we want to get new people in. I'm not as valued, and it's not. It's just because it's that's the way the words are written, not necessarily the intention behind it. So that that's what makes it hard. If you were going to tell me that there was some system where it was going to be this way, you know, a signing bonus and this and this, it changes everything for everyone. But um, when you just hear the idea of a signing bonus, you know. And I'm sure Toulon will say the same thing from administrators. If it's a first year administrator and they're getting this big bonus, but you know, in my case and, and um, Toulon's case, you've been here for 10 or 15, 20 years, this person who's done nothing for Norwalk is walking off the street and getting a bonus. I've been here for 20 years trying to, you know, breathe life into the vision that's coming to us. It stinks. So it when we say recruitment and retention, we need to also occupy the retention. Yes. Like yeah. The focus is, I mean, the heading is yeah. recruitment and retention, but the subheading should also include elements of retention. Yes. Yeah. And not just the sub bullet on yeah. recruitment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The longevity yeah. piece yeah. is big. Because mm -hmm. the, the first thing teachers yeah. see is, you know, signing bonuses and they think right. it's for the early end. What about me? And it's, it's a selfish way to look at it, and you know. But, but it's, it's. And I think we are addressing both. Right? Yeah, I'm not saying that you're not. It's just like. Yeah. It's just it's that word. It's just you think of it, signing bonus early on as opposed to if there was like if it said signing bonuses slash retention bonuses. That's a little bit easier to understand and pivot to. That's part of storytelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good. Um, so the final slide is just future opportunities to engage the next. Um, obviously, with this, all of this information, the board is going to. Um, we'll have a workshop in December, and then just before Christmas, the board will approve um, the board's tentative approved budget. But then in January, there will be a joint meeting of the board of ed and the common council finance committee. At that point, uh, we will actually be looking at the uh, Board of Ed's tentative approval budgets. We'll have some numbers. We'll know the drivers. We'll know what those costs are. The, uh, so that's on the 9th of January. And then in February, just before Valentine's Day, the Common Council Finance and Claims Committee will actually have a public hearing. On not birthday. just. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the public hearing will be not just on the board budget, but on the entire city budget. Mm -hmm. So that's another a big thing that we'll also be pushing out. And in March, the Board of Estimate and Taxation will also do the same thing. They'll have a hearing on, on the entirety of the budget. Um, and then in April, we have conversations around the capital budget. I and that's my birthday. Oh, April 3rd. Oh, April 3rd? My birthday is earlier. And then uh, uh, in June, we will approve the final budget, which will be the reconciliation between what the city uh, has approved and what our appropriations are uh, at that point. Uh, but again, thank you. So just uh, be on the lookout. Our communications team, Nick, JD, Emily, um, they, do, they do an awesome job of, of outreaching and informing. How many hits, how many people did this? One go out to, I think, like, I heard like 3,000 or so. All the teachers, all the staff, all the families. So a little bit more. It, it, it came really through parents' work a lot. It came through parents' work a lot. So, um, <laughs> so many, right. many, many parents' work. So we, uh, we go above and beyond and share uh, the information. And the team does a great job. Alex, do you want to close with anything? No, I just wanted to thank those that are here and uh, those that I uh, watch us virtually. This was uh, for us a great opportunity to learn from you what is important. And as we continue to work through the budget process, really prioritizing uh, what we heard from the community. Uh, it's not going to be an easy budget cycle because the, t the city has its own limitations that we have to keep into consideration um, with some of the property value, uh, not property value, but property tax hikes that um, might be coming the way of to, to many of our, our taxpayers and community members. So I know it's going to be a challenge, but I think it's also important to keep at uh, front of mind that we have a lot of work to do in our system and we need the resources to do the work effectively. So I'm hoping that, like last year, we have a productive, amicable, and collaborative uh, budgetary process with the city. And um, onward and upward, thank you again for, for this information. I hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.